Hello guys, welcome to my YouTube channel Math School. In this channel, I'll be teaching you Karnataka State Board 10th Class SLC Insert Math. I'll be covering all the chapters from Part 1 and Part 2. We will solve all the example problems plus the exercises for your better understanding of each topic in your chapter. In today's video, I'll be taking up chapter number 8 from Part 1 Real Numbers. This is a very easy chapter guys. From this chapter, you can score around 2 to 4 marks in your exams. So let us now start with the chapter Real Numbers. Before going into topics present in your textbook, let us first learn what a real number is and the different categories of numbers. This you have already studied in your previous classes. Let me give you a brief explanation of real numbers. To begin with, what is a real number? Any number that can be represented on a number line is called as a real number. In your previous classes, you must have also learned how to draw a number line. Let me show you again here guys. So, number line is drawn like this with zero in between and on the right hand side of zero, you have all the positive numbers. 2, 3, 4, extending up to infinity and on the left hand side you have the negative numbers like minus 1, minus 2, minus 3, minus 4, again moving up to minus infinity. So this is a number line. Any number that can be represented on this number line is termed as the real number. Now let us see the different categories of numbers. To begin with, first we have the natural numbers denoted by capital N. See, these are the numbers which start with 1, 2, 3, all the positive numbers extending up to infinity. Again, the next category is the whole numbers denoted by capital W. These are the numbers which include the 0 along with the natural numbers. The next one is integers. Integers is denoted by capital Z. And these are the numbers which include both positive numbers, negative numbers along with zero in between. So these kind are the integers. So the next category is the rational numbers denoted by capital Q. Now let us see what a rational number is. Any number that can be written in P by Q form where q is not equal to 0, that is the denominator, and p and q are integers. So basically these are fractions which can be represented in p by q form. The q should not be equal to 0 guys, and p and q are integers. Integers in the sense they can be either positive numbers or the negative numbers. Okay. So, for example, you can see all these fractions like 1 by 2, minus 25 by 1, all this can be represented on a number line. Hence, such kind of numbers that can be converted from a decimal to fraction or fraction to decimal and such kind of numbers are nothing but the rational numbers. The next category is irrational numbers. These are the numbers which cannot be written in P by Q form. Okay, for example, see root 2, root 3 or pi. Guys, you must already know what is the value of pi. Pi is nothing but 3.141529261 and it goes on. This value keeps going on as you divide. So basically, such kind of numbers cannot be written P by Q form because you don't know even if you convert this de decimal number to fraction, you won't know like how many zeros to be added in the denominator. Like if you write 15492 and you shift this point here, uh, you don't know like how many zeros you have to add in the denominator because this number keeps on recurring or it is a non-terminating number. Therefore, they cannot be written in P by Q form. Such a kinds of number are called as the irrational numbers. Similarly, we have root 2, root 3. Okay. So, now let us, now the real numbers can be categorized in two categories. That is 
rational numbers and irrational numbers. And in the diagrammatic form also you can see the real numbers are divided into two part, two forms that is uh, irrational numbers and irrational numbers. Now, irrational numbers will include all the natural numbers, whole numbers and integers. Okay, so this is just a diagrammatic representation of different categories of real numbers. Now these are the topics given in your textbook in the chapter real numbers. The first topic is Euclid's division algorithm. Using this algorithm, we will be finding HCF of two given integers. The second topic is Fundamental Theorem of Arithmetic. Again, here we will be determining the HCF and LCM and also uh, there is a formula to learn and use here. The third topic is Irrational Numbers. Here we will be proving whether a number is irrational or not. And the fourth category, uh, fourth topic is Rational Numbers and their Decimal Expansion. Here we will be converting a rational number into the decimal expansion. This topic, this chapter is really easy guys and I'm sure you can learn this chapter within uh, one or two hours if you sit and concentrate uh, on the topics. So let us start with the first topic, Euclid's Division Algorithm. So before coming to learning about Euclid's Division Algorithm, we have to learn about Euclid's Division Lemma. So you guys must be wondering what does this word lemma means. Guys, it is nothing but it's just a proven statement used to prove another statement. In this case, we will be using this Euclid's division lemma in Euclid's division algorithm. So let us see what does this Euclid's division lemma says. Okay, It says given two positive integers a and b, there exists a unique integer q and r satisfying the equation a is equals to b into q plus r where r lies between 0 and b. To understand this, let us see a basic division first. Okay, So let us divide 7 by 2. So 2 3s are, if you divide 2 3s are 6 and you get 1 as the remainder, right? What do you say to 7? 7 is nothing but our dividend, right? And 2 is our divisor. 3 is our quotient. And 1 will be our remainder, right? Okay, writing these quotient, dividend and divisor and the div remainder in an equation form, we get this lemma e a is equal to b to q plus r. So let us write dividend is equal to divisor into quotient plus the remainder. Okay. So what is the dividend? 7 is equals to divisor is up 2 into quotient was 3 and plus the remainder was 1. Okay. So converting this into variable form, if we consider dividend as A and the divisor as B, so a quotient will be Q and the remainder will be represented as R. Okay. So this is nothing but a Euclid's division lemma. Writing the division in a different format will give you the Euclid's division lemma. Okay, so this is how we prove this lemma, right? Now the remainder R will lie between, will be less than or equal to 0 and less than div divisor that is nothing but B. Okay, so you must have understood what Euclid's division lemma is. Now use, we will use this lemma we will use this lemma in our Euclid's division algorithm. Now coming to Euclid's division algorithm. Algorithm is nothing but the steps involved to solve a problem. Now we will be using Euclid's division lemma to find the HCF of two positive integers a and b. And the steps followed in this algorithm are always consider a should be greater than b in the given two integers a and 
B. Then apply the Euclid's derivation lemma to A and B. We get A is equal to B into Q plus R. Here we already know A and B. We have to find the quotient and the remainder. After the division, the second step is if R is equal to 0, then the HCF is the divisor B. If R is not equal to 0, then we have to apply the Euclid's division lemma to B and E. And then we have to find again the quotient and the remainder and, and continue these steps until R is equal to 0. If R is equal to 0, then the divisor at that stage is, will be the HCF required. Okay, this is very simple. You have to keep dividing and finding out the remainder R until it is equal to 0. Now, let me take a small example here and explain you this algorithm. Now, let us take example numbers 455 and 42. Now, here in the given steps, first we have to take A as A greater than B. So, we will take A equal to 455 and B is equal to 42. Then apply the Euclid's division lemma. So, Euclid's division lemma is A is equal to B into Q plus R. Here we already know A and B value. We will divide and find out the Q and R value. So, by dividing 455 by 42, we can take 10 times. So, we will get 420. And the remainder after subtraction you get as 5, 5 minus 2 as 3, 35 as the remainder. So writing down in the equation form, 455 is equal to 42 into 10 plus 35. Since the remainder 35 is not equal to 0, we will reapply the Euclid's division lemma to 42 and and the remainder 35 by taking uh, as a new A and B. So dividing 42 by 35, if you take one time, you get 35. By subtracting the remainder, you get is 7. So writing in the equation form, 42 is equal to 35 into 1 plus the remainder was so again the remainder 7 is not equal to 0 reapplying the Euclid's division lemma and taking our present B and R as A and B and dividing 35 divided by 7 7 pi's are 35 and then now the remainder becomes 0 so at writing the equation 35 is equal to 7 into 5 plus 0. At this stage, when the remainder R is equal to 0, we have to consider the present divisor 7 as the HCF. Therefore, the HCF of 455 and 42 is 7. Okay, this is how you determine the HCF of giving two positive integers using Euclid's division algorithm. Now, in, now let us solve the example problems in this topic. Okay, guys, let us solve the example problem from this topic, Euclid's division algorithm. The, the question number one, use Euclid's algorithm to find the HCF of 4052 and 12576. According to this algorithm, we have to always take A as greater than B. So, here the values are 12,576 is greater than 4,052. So, we will take A value as 12,576 and B as 4,052. Now, applying the Euclid's division lemma, we get A is equal to B into Q plus R. Now, we already know A and B value. We have to divide and find the Q and R. So, let us divide so 12,576 by 
4052. So we will take 3 times this value since it is 12 here. So by multiplying 3 2s are 6 by 3s are 15. Then 3 zeros are 0. So carry 1 will come here. 4 3s are 12. And subtracting 6 minus 6 is 0. 7 minus 5 is 2. 5 minus 1 is for the remainder what we get is 420. So writing down here in the equation format 12,576 is equal to 4052 into 3 plus the remainder was 420. Now we can see that the remainder is not equal to 0. So we will reapply the Euclid's division lemma to 4052 and 420. So dividing 4052 by 20. Here we can't take 10 times as um, the result will become more than 4052. So let us take 9 times. 9 zeros are 0, 9 twos are 18, carry 1, then 4 nines are 36. So this will become 37. Now subtracting 2 minus 0 is 2, then five, five, we have to borrow here. So this will be 3, this will be 9 and this will be 15. So 15 minus 8 will be equal to 7 and 9 minus 7 is 2. So the remainder is 272. Now writing down in the equation format 4052 is equal to 420 into quotient was 9 plus the remainder is 272. So again, the remainder is not equal to 0. Again, reapply the Euclid's division lemma to 420 and 272 and divide. So 420 is divided by 272. Let us take once. If you take even twice, it will be more than this value, 420. So 272 into once, we will get 272 only. Now, we will subtract. So 10 minus 2 is 8. Now 11, so this will become 3. So 11 minus 7 will become 4 and 3 minus 2 is 1. So the remainder is 148. Again, writing in the equation form, we get 420 is equal to 272 into 1 plus the remainder is 148. Again, the remainder is not equal to 0. So reapply the Euclid's division lemma to 272 and 148. Now dividing again. 272 divided by 148 again will take one time so 148 if you get here so this will be 6 and 12 minus 8 is 4 6 minus 4 is 2 2 minus 1 is 1 so the result is 124 now applying writing in the equation form we get 272 is equal to 148 in the quotient what we got is 1 plus the remainder is 124. Reapplying the Euclid's division lemma to 148 and 124 and dividing 148 by 124. Again, we will take one time. We will get 124 here. So 8 minus 4 is 4, 4 minus 2 is 2. The remainder is 24. Now writing down in the equation form, 148 is equal to 124 into 1 plus the remainder is 24. Again, reapplying the Euclid's division lemma to 124 and 24 and dividing them 124 divided by 24. So let us take 5 times. So you get 120, right? So 4 minus 0 is 4. So this is 0. Again, this is 0. The remainder is 4. Again, reapply the Euclid's division lemma. First of all, write the equation 124 is equal to 24 into 5 and the remainder what we got is 4. Since again the remainder is not equal to 0, so reapply the Euclid's division lemma to 24 and 4. Now, so let us divide 24 divided by 4. 4, 6 are 24 remainder is now equal to 0. So writing in the equation form 24 is equal to 4 into 6 plus 0. At this stage the remainder is 0. So now we will stop the division 
and the present divisor that is 4 is equal to the HCF. Therefore, the HCF of 2 positive integer 4052 and 12576 is 4. So this is our result. Now, let us solve the second example problem from your textbook which says show that every positive integer is of the form 2q and that every positive or integer is of the form 2q plus 1 where q is some integer. You can notice in from the question that it says every positive even integer should be of the form 2q and every positive odd integer should be of the form 2q plus 1. In both the cases, the integer should be positive. Okay. For this, initially, let us assume, assume a to be a positive integer. a to be a positive integer. <coughs> Okay, and let b is equal to 2. We are assuming b is equal to 2 so that we get this 2q form here. Okay, now let us apply Euclid's division lemma to these a and b value. The lemma is a is equal to b into q plus r where r is less than or equal to 0 and less than D. Apply, applying this a and b value to this lemma, we get a is equal to 2q plus r, where r is less than or equal to 0 and less than b, that is nothing but 2. Now, substituting these r and r values, the r values can be either r is equal to 0 and r is equal to 1. Now, substituting these r values in this equation, we will get a is equal to 2q plus 0 which is a is equal to 2q and a is equal to 2q plus 1. Now initially if you have observed we assume that a to be a positive integer. Now since a is a positive integer anything equal to a is also a positive integer. So a is equal to 2q is also a positive integer and a is equal to 2q plus 1 will also be a positive integer. So, in both the cases, we will say that 2q and 2q plus 1 are positive integer. Positive integer. Now, we have to find whether they are even or odd. Now, taking this first case, a is equal to 2q. This is divisible by 2. Hence, a is equal to 2q is an even integer. It is an even integer integer. Now, taking the second case, a is equal to 2q plus 1. This cannot be divisible by, this is not divisible by 2. So, hence it is an odd integer. Okay. See, this I can prove also. If you take 2q plus 1 and q is some integer, if you take q is equal to 1, so this will be 2 into, Q, uh, 2 into 1 is 2 plus 1 will be 3. Again, if you assume uh, Q to be 2, so 2 into 2 will be 4 plus 1 will be 5. So, you, you will get all the odd numbers here. Therefore, we can say that 2Q plus 1 is an odd integer. Therefore, we can say that A is equal to 2Q is a positive it is a positive even integer, even integer and a is equal to 2q plus 1 is a positive, it is a positive odd integer. Okay guys, did, I hope so you have understood this. We have proved the question what was asked. So now let us solve the third example problem from your textbook. 
which says show that any positive odd integer is of the form 4q plus 1 or 4q plus 3 where q is some integer. This problem is very much similar to the previous example problem which we have already solved. So um, let us see how to solve this problem. So we have to prove that any positive odd integer is of the form 4q plus 1 and 4q plus 3. Therefore, initially let us assume let us assume a to be a positive odd integer. a to be a positive odd integer. Okay. And let b is equal to 4 since we have to get this form 4q plus 1 and 4q plus 3. Therefore, we are taking b is equal to 4. Now apply Euclid's division lemma which says a is equal to b into q plus r and r is less than or equal to 0 and less than or equal to b. So applying this a and b value in this uh, algorithm, we get a is equal to 4q plus r and r is less than or equal to 0 and less than b which is here in this case it is 4. So r will can be have values from 0, 1, 2 and 3. Now equating all this r value in the equation, in this equation number 1, we get a is equal to 4q, a is equal to 4q plus 1, a is equal to 4q plus 2 and a is equal to 4q plus 3. Initially, if you remember, we have already assumed a to be a positive odd integer. But here we can notice that a is equal to 4q and a is equal to 4q plus 2 are divisible by 2. Okay, these two numbers are divisible by 2. Therefore, we can say that these are not odd integers. Okay, these are even integers. Therefore, we can say that these both are even integers. So therefore, a is equal to 4q plus 1 and a is equal to 4q plus 3 are positive or integers. Therefore, we can prove that any positive odd integer, any positive odd integer is of the form 4q plus 1 and 4q plus 3. Okay, this is very simple and easy if you understand the concept. Okay, guys, so let us solve our last example problem from the textbook. That is example number 4, which says a sweet seller has 420 kaju burfis and 130 badam burfis. She wants to stack them in such a way that each stack has same number and they take up the least area of the tray. What is the number of that can be placed in each stack for this purpose? Okay, let us understand the question first. A sweet seller has 420 kaju burfis and 130 badam burfis. She wants to stack them in a tray. Let us assume this is a tray. And this, she wants to stack them in a tray one above the other such that each stack has same number of burfis and all the stacks she makes should occupy the least amount of area of the tray. Therefore, to find the number of burfis in each stack, we have to find the HCF of 420 kaju burfis and 130 badam burfis. Okay, let me write down to determine To determine number of burfis in each stack, in each stack, we have to find, we have to find HCF of 420 kaju burfis and 130 Badam burfis. Therefore, let us apply the Euclid's division algorithm. 
fraction algorithm which says a is equal to b into q plus r where r is less than or equal to 0 and less than b. Therefore, since uh, 420 is greater than 130, we will take a is equal to 420 and b is equal to 130. Now, dividing a by b, 420 by 130, let us take 3 times, 3 zeros are 0, 3 threes are 9, 3 ones are 3. Now, the remainder what we get is 30. Now, the remainder is not equal to 0 here. So, writing in the equation form, 420 is equal to 130 into 3 plus the remainder is 0. Sorry, the remainder is 30 which is not equal to 0. So, reapplying the Euclid's division algorithm to 130 and 30 and 130 is equals to 30. So, divide 130 by 30. We will take 4 times. 4 zeros are 0, 4 threes are 12, so 120. After subtraction, you get the result as 10. Therefore, 130 is equal to 30 into 4 plus the remainder is 10, which is again not equal to 0. Now, applying the Euclid's division algorithm to 30 and 10, we get 30 is equal to 10. Now, dividing 30 by 10, 10 3s are 30 and the remainder is 0. Therefore, 10 into 3 plus the remainder is 0 now. Therefore, at this stage, the div divisor is our HCF. Therefore, the sweet seller, therefore, therefore, the sweet seller makes, therefore, the sweet seller makes the sweet seller makes stacks of makes stacks of 10 for both burfees for both burfees to to uh, occupy to occupy least area of the tray okay so we have found out the result here hopefully you have understood the this example problem which i have solved so this completes the example problems of euclid's division algorithm in my next video, I will be teaching and solving exercise 8.1 problems from chapter real numbers. So guys, if you like my video, please like, share and subscribe to my channel Math School and please hit the bell button below to get latest updates of my videos.